everybody. This is MBA Today on YouTube. This is the stuff, the extra bits, the stuff that we didn't quite get into the show that airs at 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. He is Kendrick Perkins. He is Tim Legler. I am Malika Andrews. And we need to talk about the Golden State Warriors because it feels like their loss to the Sacramento Kings after leading by more than 20 points in the first half was just a microcosm legs of everything that has gone wrong that has become so frustrating for Golden State. And I asked this on the show, and we didn't really dive as far into it as as we could have, and that's why we have this here. Why does it feel like when they're 8-10, and 10, it feels like any other team that's 10-30? and 30? Because we're just not used to seeing them struggle like this. I mean, yeah. this is like running in the mud for, for a team that we know has, has accomplished so much together. Uh, have so much firepower and, and so many guys right now not, not really playing to their to their norm. And so we expect more from them still because Steph Curry's healthy. And we see Steph Curry out there doing his thing. We expect the Warriors to be better. So when they struggle, mm. it really is something that just kind of hits us all. And we start to wonder because of their success and the age of some of these guys, we always wonder when they struggle, is it the end? Have yeah. we seen the last run in the Golden State Warriors? And when you see them blow a lead like that in that fashion, it really kind of pounds that point home where you start to question it the next morning. Where are they? What's the state of the franchise? What's the future look like? Not just this season, but beyond. And so you're right. They ran into the perfect storm. This is the one team you don't want to see when you're trying to hold off, you know, with a 20 yeah. point lead, right? The Sacramento Kings, so much firepower. They sensed it that Golden State was starting to play not to lose a little bit and Sacramento took it from them and it just one more loss in what's been a very difficult start to the season for Golden State. Can I list, Perk, like, there's a couple of things that stood out to me, and I'm wondering which ones you would say, yeah, okay, that's something to focus on, and which ones is just like a, a one-off here, right? You have Moses Moody being hot, right, and they sub him out as one thing that mm -hmm. stood out in that mm -hmm. game. You have Steve Kerr using a challenge on that play with Steph Curry where it was pretty clear he kicked out and it wasn't going to be overturned, and then they ended up needing that later. You have some Clay Thompson being hot in the first half, cold in the second half. You have Andrew Wiggins, who was better in that game, not as good, uh, better in that game, but not as good for the rest of the season. As you're looking at the turnovers and then the injuries to Chris Paul and then to, to Gary Payton as well. What if that is something to, to look into? What if that is something to say, okay, we're going to flush this? Well, let me just, first of all, let me, you threw a lot at me. And I know, you know it's it like, like six things. Usually I'm like a. <laughs> one thing, but to process six things, okay, so here we are. I look around the league and I look at the contenders, right? You look at the Lakers, they got better, they went and got younger. I mean, re signing Rui. Uh, bringing back Jared Vanderbilt because they know they needed athleticism, getting Toria Prince, Jackson Hayes. Okay, yeah. you look at Minnesota and how athletic they are. You look at just across the league. And when I look at the Golden State Warriors, I've been asking this question for the last year. And I started off this season asking, when are they going to build for the future? You can still compete for a title, but build for a future. Mm -hmm. And what Steve Kerr showed me last night is that he doesn't trust the future because there's no way in hell that you take Moses Moody out after he had the, the run that he had in that second half, going 100% from the field, 100% for three. I believe he finished with 11 points. But my thing is, is that you got to be able to build for the future. You got to provide and let Jonathan Kaminga play through his mistakes. Is Moses Moody is playing better than Klay Thompson at that point of the uh, game? You got to make a decision. Decision, And the right decision at the time was to leave your best players that were giving you the most on the Hot floor. Hand. The Golden State Warriors can't continue to live in the past. They got to look in the now, and they got to look towards the future. Are you ready for me to throw the six things at you, yeah, Lex? Six. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to throw the six things at you now to parse I was sitting there saying, I'm glad Perk got that one. Yeah, I was. that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Which ones were you looking at, though, that you're like, okay, like this for Golden State? I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I will never be the person, we've talked about this before, to usher in the end of, you know, ring the bell, this is the end of the Golden State Warriors. But Zach said on the show it feels like they're closer to that than they've ever been before. If that's the conversation that we're having, is that fair, Lex? Yeah, I do think it's fair. And I think when we start to talk about the things you listed, and they're all, they're all great points, you know, I guess what you're asking is, which of these things are the most concerning that might not turn around? And I think for me, I'm starting to get to that point a little bit with Clay. Now, look, I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt because of who he is and what he represents historically. But it's gotten to the point where it's a struggle to watch him not only get space, but to miss open looks that he feel like you feel like he normally makes mm -hmm. with his eyes closed. 
That's when you start to go. When he strings it together for this long a period of time, and last night when he comes out of the gate, he's got 12 points early in the game. You're thinking maybe tonight's the night. It's when he won those clay nights, goes for 35, 40, and maybe that triggers him. What happens? He has a great first half, second half, reverts back to what the rest of this season Why has looked like that for Clay was? Thompson. Yeah, they, listen, they, they make the adjustment. The difference is when teams adjusted to Clay Thompson in the past, it didn't matter because his trigger was so quick. He was, mm -hmm. he was getting that space, and even if he didn't, he, if he got his right hand free, it was going in. You don't feel as confident about that with Clay Thompson, and I feel for him, and I think there's one more component with Clay. Mm. I don't think there's any player in the league harder on themselves yep. when they're struggling than Clay Thompson, and he wears his emotions externally. You can just see him. He paces around like a lion in a cage when guys are shooting free throws. He's almost talking to himself because he wants to make the slump end on the next shot. It doesn't work that way. When you squeeze it too tight, it snowballs the other direction. And so I think Clay Thompson right now is really beating himself up because he takes this stuff home. He's got so much pride. You know that, and it's working against him right now. You know in that, like I felt that way about him, and I, <clears throat> Clay and I have talked in the past about how sometimes he can get between his own ears. That press conference when he was sort of asked about how much he appreciates the confidence that Steve Kerr has in being patient with the starting lineup, and he went to, well, are you trying to bench me? And whether or not that was a question that was perfectly phrased, I'm not here to get into that, but you could just, I think it, it showed a little little bit of how Clay's feeling right now and, and you have to be a little bit empathetic to that because that's not what we've grown accustomed to from Clay Perk. But it's so much pressure and legs you 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 can relate to this look Malika when, when, when a basketball player okay first of all the court is your sanctuary but yeah. when you have so much going on in your head you cannot go out there and perform at your best. That's why you want to surround yourself with the right people when you go home. Also, you don't have to want to be worried about, am I playing for a contract? I believe this is what, Clay, only time in his career that he actually is playing, like his contract is up. Other than that, he's been extended, right? Like he's had contract extensions. This is his first time probably going to end a free agency. That plays a huge part. On the other end, like, is it, is it the end of the world if the Warriors' run has, have, have, has come to an end? Like, they had one hell of a run. You could think about, like, Shaq and Kobe. We never thought it would come to an end, but it did. Jordan with the Chicago Bulls, him and Scotty, it came to an end. Like, it's not the end of the world. We could appreciate what they've done, but I'm just thinking about Klay Thompson, and I'm thinking about a refresh, a guy that could be in a new situation, and what he would do with new life on a new basketball team, that Clay Thompson. And I think he still have a lot left in the tank. Again, I'm going to keep harping on this. I believe the problem with Clay is bigger than basketball. I just, I can't see, and I don't, you know, there's things that can't happen until December 15th. At this point, we're only a couple of, of weeks away until January 15th, in some cases for other players. Um, but it, it's hard for me to see Steph Curry, let alone the Golden State Warriors brass even getting to that point. But it would be hard for me to see, and this is not coming from anything other than observation, not reporting, uh, Steph Curry signing off on that. There is a reason that Draymond Green came back. Of course, his basketball value to Golden State, but because Steph has said time and time again, he wants to ride out with the guys he rode in with, and, and that was Clay and Dre and, and Steve Kerr even to an extent, and that's what makes it so. I don't disagree that those conversations, Kendra Andrews had great reporting on sort of all of the things weighing on the Golden State Warriors this week. Um, but that, that, it feels like a conundrum that I am not jealous. I, maybe we should ask Bob Myers about it, but I'm not jealous uh, of what the Golden State Warriors are having to sort of figure out right now. I, I think there are certain players, because of what they have, they, have, they have meant to an organization, they get past that point where that's even a genuine conversation that would take place. I think Klay Thompson is one of those guys, and I think it would have to be on Klay Thompson's terms if for whatever reason he ever got to that point where he wanted to try a different pasture if that's what he wanted to do. But I don't think the Warriors, no matter what happens with Clay, the rest of this year, if this is exactly what Clay Thompson is, right. the rest of this year, the rest of his career, I think some guys, yeah. they just transcend that with an organization. And, and I think Clay Thompson is in that category 
Um, but I hear what Perk is saying. There's more in the tank, and maybe that would be interesting to think about if he were to play in a different situation. But I don't think that would come and be initiated right. by the Golden State Warriors. That would almost have to be something that would come mm -hmm. from Blake Thompson. Well, even Kevin Durant, right, when he went down with the injury, and he, he obviously was looking for something else at that point. But the Warriors, by all accounts, were willing and wanting to offer him the, 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 max, the max contract that he could get to stay there, mm -hmm. not knowing, obviously, what he would be on the other side of that. That's what Golden State has become. And by the way, in all of this, none of us are saying, oh, this is a charity case for Klay Thompson. Klay Thompson will, is a future Hall of Famer. He is one of the best shooters to touch the basketball. And there is just yes, something indeed. not right with Golden State. And as fans of the game, I think all of us just want to see it kind of come back or at least have a better understanding as to why we're seeing it the way we are right now. Uh, the Warriors, they sit at 8-10. and 10. We'll see if they can continue to sort of climb out of the, the ditch that they are in right now. But it is going to be interesting. The season, it seems more and more like it's coming down not just to what Steph Curry can do, but what Clay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins can give. And we saw at best what it can be in 2022. And maybe now we're seeing where this is headed. And that would be a little bit unfortunate. All right, let's pick it back up. I feel like this was like, uh, Perk, tell me something good before we <laughs> sign off. Anything good? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, mean, Where I, I, get to, I got to hang out with you today. Good. That's a I, that's a good thing. Yeah, I got I mean, to hang out with you today, Perk. I don't, I don't, you know, you know what? Let me tell you what? something good. I'm going to tell you this. Please. The in-season tournament hey. has brought so much life to basketball. I mean, that game last night felt like a playoff game with a playoff atmosphere when you talk about the Kings and the Warriors. And that is the best rivalry in the NBA. And it is a rivalry, mm -hmm. though. Yeah. It's the best rivalry. I know it's short, but it is a rivalry. Well, Steph Curry said he needs to check with the, the, the committee on rivalries to see if this one officially, I, as a committee <laughs> member, just kidding, I think it's officially becoming a, a budding rivalry. Yeah. All right, more good news. I'm excited for my dinner tonight. Tim and I are going to go hang out a little <laughs> bit after the show. Perk, <laughs> always good to see you. That's it for us here on YouTube. You can catch NBA All Today, right. 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, and we'll have more good news for you there. Perk promises. <laughs>